shut it. 2022. This was a metaphor heavy, in your face, quasi redemption story that just misses the mark of being okay. So Jessica is a recovering addict and single mom who, for reasons, is selling her grandmother's broken down house and moving really for lack of employment and money. Things go awry when the father of her children, Rob, a hardcore addict, shows up with his addict slash molester friend Sam and they lock her in the house's pantry to humble her and get her addicted again, going so far as to lock her in with a bag of meth. They leave the house with her locked in said pantry and in doing so leave her kids, the eldest of which looks to be about four to five and the baby maybe a year or so old, unattended in this very, very dilapidated house. Jessica then works in the dumbest ways possible to sort of escape while instructing the eldest, Lainey, on how to take care of herself and the baby in mommy's absence. This includes changing the baby and feeding the baby both outdated apple butter from Lord knows how long ago, as well as mixing baby bottles. It's unrealistic and rather absurd that Lainey would even be capable of doing all that she did for her brother based upon her age, and I felt like this part was better suited for a seven or eight-year-old, but whatever. The movie takes a really dark turn when Sam comes back explicitly saying that Rob owes him money and he came back for payment and alludes to taking said payment via the exploitation of Lainey. And Jessica manages to trap him by promising him the meth that was left with her. When she convinces Sam to reach under the pantry door to grab the meth, because she claims she can't reach the door herself, she runs a screwdriver into his hand, thereby securing him with a ground, unable to escape. While visually interesting, this was dumb because there was a several inch gap under the door. I mean, it was big enough for Sam's entire arm and forearm to fit under it, and for Jessica and Lainey to look at each other under the door prior to the scene, but Sam just throws his arm under without bothering to so much as glance to see what's happening or if Jessica is lying. Her entire trap was predicated upon him averting his eyes and neglecting to verify the situation, which he of course did. Jessica then uses whatever she can try and find to dig her way through the tile floor and Yoey gives up, going so far as to cut lines of meth and rolling up paper with which to snort it before catching a glimpse of money in her Nana's Bible. She finds thousands of dollars in the Bible and gets mad that it's useless now, what with her being locked in the pantry, and she chucks the Bible at a crucifix across the pantry. This causes Jesus to fall off the wall and his cross, and when she picks him up, water falls from the leaking ceiling, lands on Jesus, and allows her to find an easy way out of the pantry through the ceiling. This was unbelievably frustrating. Your kids have been alone, hungry, crying, tired, wetting themselves, and your eldest dropped your youngest near the stairs, and you needed some heavy-handed symbology to find the way out? You didn't even check every possible wall, floorboard, and ceiling section to save your kids? She spent what seems like a day chipping at the tile, and it ended up taking mere moments to climb through the ceiling. I lost all respect for the character in this moment because now she's a bad mom and dumb without explanation. It wasn't even a real revelation. The ceiling looked rotted and wet and she pulled the wood down immediately. So if she had even bothered to look in that direction, she would have seen her way out. But escape she does. So she gets out, doesn't bother to check Sam's pulse or look for a phone on him, but takes his keys, only to find out that he rode a motorcycle over and she can't get away with her children. So she takes her kids out into the pouring rain to retrieve food from her locked car in order to... That's right, take them back inside to eat. Why did you take them outside? The scene made zero sense and all it did was set up Jessica's need to take them back in, abandoning the food in the rain, which she then goes back out to retrieve, only for Sam to magically wake up and take the kids hostage. Skip inside, Sam has a knife to the baby and is making demands, and Rob arrives just in time to dispatch him, and then proceeds to demand that Jessica do mess with him to prove she isn't better than him. She agrees, but only after convincing him to eat a sandwich, she's laced with the drugs that she offers almost did in the pantry. So Rob does some drugs, tries to get Jessica to, but because he had the drugs in the sandwich as well, it causes Rob to start to OD. Finally, Jessica in a fight defenestrates him and he slams his head into the porch and bye bye Rob. Fade to black and she hasn't moved. And now she's making Anna's apple butter and selling it and things are cheery? Wait, what? Self-defense or not, you just killed the father of your children in that house. The same house a child molester was shot and killed trying to abuse your children. No cops? No DA? I mean, how much money was in that Bible? How did you procure enough sales to save the house? The house wasn't sold in the beginning based on the for sale sign, which means you still owe the taxes that your move was based upon. I'm so confused by the financial implications and justifications for Jessica throughout this movie. Beyond just that, this movie was incredibly frustrating. It was well acted, well shot. I liked Jessica and it had potential, but it dragged on based largely on the idiotic actions of Jessica, and the resolution relied upon heavy-handed religious tones. I mean, they even gave her wounds on both hands from nails that just felt kind of forced. I actually wouldn't have minded the symbolism if she had exhausted her options and through grace had found a way out, but I didn't feel like she did the right work. She just did work. 
that meant nothing ultimately and was shown the way by Jesus after she had basically given up in anger and it felt wrong and misplaced. The driving forces behind this movie were twofold. The first being religion and where the plot was lacking in biblical subtlety it made up for in character stupidity. I like that Jessica redeemed herself. I like that she wanted to be a better mother. I like that she wanted to follow the footsteps of her grandmother but it just I don't know it was just lacking. The character was lacking and again I thought Lainey was just really miscast for her age. Now with the Daily Wire attached I was honestly expecting worse but was hoping for better. All in all, I didn't like it, and sadly I have to give it a 2 of 5. Cheers.